Steve Fox, a boxing champion who was raised in London, England, won many boxing championships and tournaments over the past decade. His latest victories were under the King of Iron Fist tournament, which is held every few years by the Mishima Zaibatsu. However, lately Steve has become tired of winning the tournaments and boxing championships and decided to head out in search of a new challenge. One day, whilst roaming the streets of New York, Steve saw a message stating that a new Formula 1 team was in need of a driver. Steve decides to take the offer and heads out to Banbury, located in the United Kingdom, to see what this amazing offer is. Hey guys, I'm Viper and uh, welcome to a brand new video, and more specifically welcome to my F1 2016 career mode. Uh, and uh, as you can see on screen at the moment, just showing you guys uh, what I'll be doing in terms of weekend wise and what difficulty we're going. We're going on uh, expert difficulty, that's a legend then, expert difficulty, and uh, we'll be playing as Steve Fox. Now, for a lot of people that have no idea who he is, or didn't get the intro at the start, there's a game series called Tekken, and one of the characters in there, my most favourite beloved character in the game that they have, is called Steve Fox, who, as I said, is a British boxer. Now, I wanted to kind of bring two games into one here, and hence where the whole Steve Fox career mode came from. He'll be racing on the, alongside number 18, and uh, as you guys will see in a minute, as we're going through the team selection in a minute, as you'll be known as Fox, obviously that's his last name, so... It's good that they have a three letter abbreviation. I see we're going to be driving for the Haas F1 team. Now you're probably wondering who's going to be, whose teammate's going to be. Well, it's going to be Roman Grosjean. So, like I said, race distance wise, it'll be 25%. The qualifying state being one shot, like it was for Alonso as well, when I did the F1 2015, that F1 2015 career mode that I did. It'll be a short qualifying, meaning we've got 30 minutes and, that, and that's it. Uh, weekend allocation for tyres. Uh, I decided to go with the standard one, so instead of going for a softer or a harder approach, just start a balanced one, since it's the game's standard uh, you know, issue, just go with that. So let's meet our brand new agent. Hi, I'm Emma Jenkins. I'm a specialist in contract law and I've been brought in to work as your agent. I'll be working to get you the best deal in the boardroom, which means you need to do the best possible job out there on the circuit. When you get new contract offers, either from new teams or an amendment to your existing offer, it'll come through me. I'll also keep you up to date on discussions behind the scenes to change your terms or any specific goals that the team has set for you. If a contract offer does come through, I'll present to you the available offers and then you can make the call. I assume that all sounds fine. Well then, good luck this season, and I'll catch you later. Welcome to Melbourne, where the practice session is about to start for this weekend's Australian Grand Prix. The pre-race talking is over. Now it's time for the drivers to show their worth. A warm welcome once again to the man standing beside me in the commentary box for this session, Anthony Davidson. Hello, Ant. Excited to get underway? 
Yeah, absolutely. I always look forward to seeing the cars get out there on track. And they probably won't be on the limit immediately, of course. Uh, we know that one or two of the teams are looking to do some work on new aerodynamic packages, so that always takes some time to get into. But it'll be really interesting to see later on in the session what kind of performance gains are there to be found. OK, good to have you on board. I'm Jeff and I'll be your race engineer. Welcome to the team and to Formula One. I'm really looking forward to the season. Our system checks are A-OK, -okay, so we can get underway whenever you like. So here we are then, first practice session in Australia and it's Steve's first too so let's see how he gets on. Obviously there's different tyre programs that you can do, different, um, well not just different tyre programs but also like fuel saving um, and also uh, qualifying pace apparently that's also a, a different um, race thing that you can do uh, during the practice session. So the first one we're going to see as you can see uh, as he comes across the line on the medium tyres is the track customization, well, accumulation test, I think it's called, uh, which is basically where you have to follow the uh, the markers that the, the game has placed out for you, as well as the RS activation zones. And you basically have to follow them so you can get accustomed to the track, uh, which is obviously what Steve needs to do in his uh, state that he's in. Obviously, he's no proper F1 experience yet. Um, he doesn't know the tracks off by heart, so. Fingers crossed all goes well, but unfortunately riding on the kerbs too hard has caused damage and by damage I mean a wheel. A wheel just happened to come off and it just shows you how hard the damage is on this game at the moment. Now obviously the game being released, you know, only a day ago, last yesterday or the other day, it is quite a difficult game compared to 2015, but as you can see, just going past that same place where he hit the wall, did nice hit the wall, which is nice, but um, after coming across the line and coming across he did a 137089 for his first lap which isn't too bad considering it's only practice and it's a medium tyre so obviously there's different pace advantage but he did however go back out on the soft tyres uh, this was for the tyre pressures one and uh, that ended up going badly unfortunately and uh, he accidentally, I say accidentally, he failed it um, but luckily jumping in later on to the session he did actually manage to go back out went back out on the super soft tyres to do his qualifying pace and Practice his projected estimated qualifying now. position was 9th place which wasn't too bad uh, and then coming at the end of the session he decided to just do one last lap uh, just you know just to test the tyres as they were uh, unfortunately he made a bit of a mistake coming out of the last corner when he had to be the RS he went up he whacked the rear tyre and uh, unfortunately punctured it so not great uh, for Steve in, in general but uh, Finishing, I think it was 6th overall, oh 5th overall sorry, I apologise, 5th overall on the first practice session wasn't too bad, and now let's see what the commentators have to say. Quick look at the classification at the end of the session then, here are your top 3, Hamilton, Ricardo, and Nico Rosberg. Thank you for joining us for free practice today, we'll be back with more Formula 1 action very shortly. So as you can see then, uh, Lewis Hamilton tops the practice one session with Daniel Ricciardo very closely followed by him in second. Uh, Rosberg in third, Sebastian Vettel fourth in his Ferrari, Steve Fox ourselves in fifth place, Max Verstappen sixth, Kimi Raikkonen in seventh, so not a great day for Raikkonen there. Uh, Valtteri Bottas eighth and Felipe S ninth, Fernando Alonso tenth, Danny Clear eleventh, our teammate Roman Grosjean twelfth, Jensen Button thirteenth, Sites fourteenth, Perez fifteenth, Hulkenberg sixteenth, Magnussen 17th, Nasa 18th, Ericsson uh, 19th, Palmer 20th and the rear manners bringing up the rear. So that's practice one over, let's see what has in store next. Hi, good to meet you at last. My name's Chris and I'll be working with you as your Chief of Vehicle Development. It'll be my job to get your feedback as a driver and to direct our upgrade design in the areas that you feel are most lacking. At each Grand Prix, we can run a series of practice programs and log the performance of the car as you drive it at its limit. This gives us data that we can utilize to develop various performance improvements. In order for me to know which upgrades to prioritize, I'll need you to select a development area that you'd like us to focus on. And you can do that in the R&D section of your laptop. Anyway, that's all for now, but I'll keep you up to date, okay? I'll see you soon. 
Right, so obviously Steve's only just met Chris, who's our uh, technical director of the team. Um, say technical director, he's our engineer for the team. And uh, yeah, he's gone back out in practice too. And uh, unfortunately, there's a guy called Nico Rosberg who keeps stirring the pot here, keeps getting in the way. And as you'll notice, uh, lap after lap, he was at the same corner too as we did try to do our practice, you know, our testing here. And uh, Rosberg got in the way, and on this particular lap, he made us spin off. Now, personally, I don't know why he kept getting in the way. As you see, I went to flashback mode to rewind it and tried to do the same corner again. He still went for the inside line. However, this time, I managed to drive around it. The only downside was that he kept getting in the way. However, we did come across the line to finish and uh, complete our test program. So uh, that's all for practice two. An interesting practice session there then. Let's remind ourselves of the top three. Who are Vettel, Rosberg and Lewis Hamilton. That concludes an interesting practice session. Let's hope for more excitement as the weekend unfolds. So as you can see on screen, these are the results from practice two. Sebastian Vettel top in the timesheets this time. And you'll notice the field is a lot more spaced out and uh, obviously our cells are in 21st. But you'll notice a lot of different people like Daniel Ricciardo there in 16th and you know, a few names are at the top, but I think it's because everyone was doing the testing program like we do, we were. But um, yeah, practice two didn't seem to go as bad, as good as practice one, but obviously we were doing testing. But yeah, let's move on to qualifying. Guess who made the gossip columns this morning? Everyone's talking about this new rival you have. Check his stats out. Right, so it seems we've got a new rivalry system here, a uh, new driver rivalry, and obviously Steve being new to F1 doesn't have a clue what rivalry is, um, but uh, I wonder who the rivalry could be, because I'm guessing probably our teammate, that's a pure guess, I mean, who else is it going to be? Oh, it's our teammate, um, Roman Grosjean, so this should be quite interesting, and it appears we've got voicemail. Hi. Just letting you know that we've had the team's expectations through for the upcoming qualifying session. Right, so looking at qualifying goals, we've got to qualify in 15th place and beat Roman Grosjean. So this should be an interesting qualifying session. So let's see how we get on. Welcome to Melbourne, where qualifying for the Australian Grand Prix should be getting underway shortly. This is the kind of track that eats rear tyres for breakfast, or so I'm told by more experienced drivers than myself. Lots of low speed exits means the rears are in for a lot of punishment. It's all too easy to spin them up coming out of a corner too aggressively. It might look great for us as spectators, as we love to see a car driven beyond its limits, but it's not going to result in a great long run pace. Right, so qualifying here at Melbourne and Steve Fox's first qualifying session. We've had his first practice session, he's obviously got a more better feel for the track. And now he's time for qualifying. So uh, as you can see, he's gone out on the soft tyres. Reasonably decent choice, I have to say. Um, I presume he wants to save his medium, so obviously going out onto the soft, soft tyres is not a bad idea. Um, but obviously he's going to lack uh, pace, obviously because the soft tyre has been a bit harder than the super soft, which is the softest compound of the weekend. Uh, and you can also lose time, as you can see with Stappen there, uh, setting the fastest lap at the moment. Um, but um, yeah, fingers crossed we can actually get through to Q2 or actually no, make it into the top 10 really. Uh, the idea is obviously for our first qualifying session is that we're, we're going to try and aim high. Oh, not too high, I don't mean pole position, but Steve's obviously aiming for uh, a top 10 podium, not top 10 podium, top 10 uh, finish, but uh, that going through the different sectors, as you can see, going through sector 1, 8 tenths down, then going through sector 2, he's 1.8 seconds down, so not too great, and it looks like it's going to be a bit of a dismal lap this one, his first lap being qualifying, um, but as you can see, he's opening the DRS, coming across the line, What's it going to be? 130.1, which isn't too bad, uh, especially given it's on soft tyres. But uh, yeah, later on in the qualifying session, which is actually his fastest slot, which we'll go right on board with the whole way through, uh, which he set on the super soft tyres. Um, you see, coming across the line with the RS on and uh, coming down through the gears into four, uh, down fourth uh, gear, going up through the gears again enabling DRS to go down this line DRS straight 
And as you see, you can already see from the delta in the top right that he's already gaining several tenths on his previous best, which is obviously the 130.1. Um, so it looks good so far, but obviously, like I said, we're going to stay on board for that entire lap, just so you guys know, can see exactly what sort of a lap he's put together to get this uh, position that he came in the end of the line. Of course, I know, but I'm not mentioning it just yet. I'll wait for you guys to see it. Um, but as you can see, going through sector two now, and uh, this right-hander here is a bit of a tricky one, because the moment you mount that curve, especially on the right, obviously, you mount the curb on the right and you gain a slight bit of air, you get a lot of wheel spin and you can often spin the car out. As you can see, he's 1.1 seconds up going through the middle sector. He's still 8 tenths down on Daniel Ricciardo, who's currently the fastest man in the qualifying session. Um, but considering how far off, he's within a second of Ricciardo, which is still pretty good to see. Especially considering the fact that Steve's on his rookie season. This is his first season, first ever season in Formula 1. And uh, obviously, it's not only that, but his first ever season in Formula 1, it's his first qualifying session and um, as you see coming around the last corner he's going to open up the DRS going up through gears, up through 6th, 7th and into 8th gear and across the line the 128.9 which gets him 7th place in his first qualifying session. Let's see what the results are. As we wind down from the excitement of qualifying, here's a look at your top three. Ricardo, Hamilton and Nico Rosberg. With qualifying complete, all that remains is the main event. We'll be live and uninterrupted for the Grand Prix tomorrow, so make sure you join us then. So as you can see then, Daniel Ricciardo gets the first pole position of the 2016 season with Lewis Hamilton alongside him. Rosberg third with Raikkonen fourth, the two Ferraris next to each other. Max Verstappen sixth with Valtteri Bottas seventh. Fernando Alonso doing a mighty job in eighth. Ourselves, Steve Fox getting an impressive ninth place uh, considering Steve's in his first ever qualifying session. Uh, well, first ever qualifying of the uh, entire his entire F1 career. Carlos Sainz coming home in 10th for Toro Rosso with Felipe Massa behind. Then you clear in 12th, our teammate Roman Grosjean, who we managed to beat in the end, comes home in 13th. Then it's the Brits of Jensen Button and Jody Powell, 14th and 15th. Paris, 16th. Nico Hulkenberg, 17th, so the two Force Indies line up next to each other. Mark Sorensen, 18th. Erline, 19th. Ria Harianto, 20th. Ken Markson, 21st. And Felipe Nazarin, 22nd. And that is all for qualifying. I will now hand you over to the race. Hey, guess who? I've seen the team's expectations for the race, so I thought I'd pass them on and wish you luck. Take care. Right, so we've been told by our uh, agent that we need to finish the race in 13th place or higher and ahead of Roman Grosjean. And uh, our target for the Drivers' Championship is 14th place. So, fingers crossed we can do it, pull it off, it seems likely. But, uh, yeah, I'll hand you over to the commentators. The atmosphere is heavy with expectation and anticipation and bearing the weight of that burden today is a place we know very well indeed. It's Albert Park. The story of the season begins here then with the Australian Grand Prix and it's time for the first chapter to be written. We go racing today then in the state of Victoria where the drivers have 16 corners and 3.3 miles to navigate at an average lap speed of around 120 miles an hour. The close proximity of the barriers makes accidents inevitable and recent history shows us that a safety car is not at all out of the question. I'm joined today in the commentary box as I will be throughout this season by a great racing driver, former F1 competitor, former world champion and dare I say it, all round top bloke as well. It's the one and only Anthony Davidson and tell me, here we are, first Grand Prix of the season and it's gone and rained on us. I imagine that that's not especially helpful for the teams who are still trying to figure out, of course, what kind of performance they're all capable of. First of all, Crofty, and thanks for the glowing introduction. I just want to say it's a real privilege to be here. I can't wait to see what this competitive field has in store for us this season. Now, in regards to the weather, you're absolutely right. You know, we've just come here off the back of testing. It's the first opportunity to really gauge where the reliability is, where the performance is, how you stack up against your competitors in the Grand Prix, and now it all has to be kind of put on hold for a bit. So now the question becomes, who can be adaptable? 
who has the wet weather pace and who can make best use of these difficult circumstances to come out on top in these conditions. OK, we qualified higher than we were anticipating. Let's see if we can do just as well in the race. So before the off, let's remind ourselves of yesterday's qualifying session with a look at the starting grid. It was a good showing from Red Bull in qualifying and Daniel Ricciardo starts from pole position. And it's Lewis Hamilton alongside. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Rosberg, Raikkonen, Sebastian Vettel and Verstappen, Bottas, Alonso, a Haas and Carlos Sainz, Massa, Kvyat, Roman Grosjean and Button, Palmer, Perez, Nico Hülkenberg and Marcus Ericsson, Verlein and Harry Anto, Kevin Magnussen and Felipe Nasser starts from the back of the grid. And with preparations almost complete, let's head down to the track. Right, so it's race day here at Melbourne and it's a very wet Melbourne too so let's see, hopefully Steve's had some practice in the wet at some stage beforehand but uh, obviously he's had his practice in the dry. As you can see there's a choice between wet and intermediate. Uh, the rain is actually set to ease off later on in the race so that'll be interesting to see how we get on. And uh, for this race decided to go for... Uh, a zero pit stop to try to do all 15 laps on the wets. So of course we can switch over to intermediates if needed um, but yeah as for race strategy that's it and uh, let's get on to the race right so we're revving up to five red lights here at wet Australia it's the lights out and away we go and a brilliant start by Steve here He's already getting past Alonso for 8th place. Is he going to try and take Verstappen as well? It looks like it bottleneck into the first corner. And it, obviously everyone's going quite slow here due to how bad the weather conditions is. Raikkonen looks like he's having trouble. Is Steve going to make the best of that situation? He is. He's going to get past Kim Raikkonen for 7th place. And now he has Valtteri Bottas in his sights. As he goes, is he going to try down the inside? He does. Is he going to try and take Sebastian Vettel as well? It looks like he's trying, he's trying, but Vettel hands in there. Now he's going to try and go around both of them. But fortunately he's lost the position to Valtteri Bottas once again. But as you can see, he's trying to keep the car on track as due to the awful weather conditions. It's pretty difficult. But he's going to go on the inside of Valtteri Bottas again. And he manages to make it move stick this time and actually starts to pull away as you can see. And uh, yeah, not a bad start considering he started in P9. Already up to 6th place. Is he going to take any more positions on this first lap? Well, we'll have to wait and see. But already a fantastic start by Steve Fox there. Considering this is his debut season, it's a dream come true, I'm sure, for him. He's already challenging the likes of Kimi Raikkonen, who, by the way, and also uh, Fernando Alonso, who are both former world champions and have been in this sport for quite a few years, for a decade even, over a decade. So the fact that he's took the two most, maybe, including Bolton as well, the fact that he's took two very experienced drivers on the grid already into, to, into the first lap and in the first few corners is mightily impressive if I do say so myself and um, as you can see coming around the last few corners here the gap between himself and Verstappen isn't that big but and as you'll see the conditions are quite difficult as well I should probably mention but as you can see the gap between ourselves and Verstappen is a reasonable gap he does start to pull away this is where the Red Bull comes into its own here however However, moving on to lap 3, we've actually managed to close the gap down. And Steve's managed to do this quite nimbly. He's nipped and tucked and dropped back when he has to. But he's coming towards the hairpin here and he goes up the inside of Max Verstappen. And uh, as he pulls away, you can see he gets a little tail happy there. I believe that was actually Max tapping him on his rear a little bit. Um, just to say, look, you know, I'm still here. You can't really overtake me. You haven't overtaken me just yet. But uh, moving on to lap 5 and coming at the end of sector 2. As you can see, he's caught full-time champion Sebastian Vettel in his Ferrari. And he's getting in his slipstream. Is he going to try and go down the inside here at this corner? And he does, and he's up into full of place. And unlike Max Verstappen's move, he did not get tagged. However, unfortunately, the gap between ourselves and the guys in front kind of stayed the same. So it was unfortunate we weren't able to catch them. But as you can see, Steve's decided that the weather conditions are good enough for intermediate tyres. So, the first time that he's ever used the pit lane speed limiter as well. So, 
it's quite interesting to see how we get on here. Now Steve thinks he's in the right by doing this. A lot of cars are staying out and doing the full 15 laps on the wet tyres. Well, so we think anyway. And uh, as you can see, we've decided to come in. Well, Steve has. He's decided to come in and put on the intermediate tyres, hoping it'll give him some advantage come the end of the race. So coming out the pit lane, where's he going to come out? 40, 15th place behind Sergio Perez, but ahead of Nick Olgenberg. So he split the force into this. And just to prove how good of a speed gap he or speed advantage that uh, Steve has, on that lap 12, so the lap he came out the pits, he took only a few lap, few corners later, he took Sergio Perez. And also, as you can see, Roman Grosjean, his teammate, nice and easy. But I won't, what, however, we are going to stay on board for this next bit because, as you'll see in a minute, he's trying to get past Jensen Button. And is he going to perform what he did on Max Verstappen? He is! He's going to go down his inside at the last second to last corner. And uh, is he going to try and get Carlos Sainz as well? It looks like he's going for it. He's going to get in his slipstream going up through the gears. Obviously no DRS enabled due to the wet conditions. But obviously he's going up. He's coming on to the 13th lap now. Is he going to go down the inside of Carlos Sainz? And he does. Nice and easy. However, it looks like Danny Kliat's gap is all getting ever so small. Obviously no DRS. But just on pure pace alone. Steve has a better advantage in these damp conditions, damp and tricky conditions I might add. Um, but he's doing quite well up to 10th place, which means he's guaranteed a point on his debut. What more could you ask for? And uh, at the end of lap 13, he catches up Felipe Massa in the Williams. So, a fantastic start, and obviously proving that he's got the pace. He goes up the inside at the same corner where he took Alonso, sorry, he took, where he took Jensen Button and Max Verstappen. And uh, speaking of Alonso, here he is on lap 14 in a train with... Valtteri Bottas and Kimi Raikkonen. I remember at the start we actually overtook Bottas and Raikkonen. Well, we've got to do it all again. Now, we've took Alonso nice and easy. Are we going to take Valtteri Bottas? Well, he goes out wide and we've took two places in two corners. However, the action doesn't stop there. As you can see, we're slowly starting to catch in and on the break we catch Kimi Raikkonen a hell of a lot, showing that we have a lot more stopping power. Uh, with these intermediate tyres on and we're going to try and go up his inside around this right hand corner here and we've managed to overtake him up into 6th place and unfortunately we weren't able to catch Max Verstappen who's the next car up the road we did try as you can see Steve's trying he crucially wants that 5th place and he's going to get in his slipstream he's going to try and go for the move for 5th place but unfortunately it's too little too late but 5th place on a debut like that must be a dream come true for Steve Fox. Sixth place, crucial points for the team, and uh, I'll hand you over to the commentators. Brilliant stuff from Mercedes today. That's another historic win. Anthony, what do you think made the difference here? The difference was clearly in the strategy. You could tell they'd done a lot of work on the pit wall to really optimise each stint and get the most out of the tyres. And it highlights just how much of a team sport this really is. Um, but credit to the driver as well though, there's no good having a well-oiled machine behind the scenes without a talented hound in the wheel, of course. And here are our podium drivers today after that excellent race. They've excelled here as they so often do, and it's a well-deserved victory. Mercedes then are on top today. And after this round of the World Championship, here's how things look in the driver's table. Nico Rosberg takes over the lead of the driver's championship after that excellent result. Moving on to the driver of the day then, Anthony Davidson, who would you go for? Today, I think I'll give it to the Haas driver. Look at where they finished compared to where they started. It's not easy to cut through the field like that in Formula 1, so it was a great effort. On to the constructors then. Mercedes moved to the top of the table. It was great having you with us for this weekend. I hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. Until next time though, goodbye. So as you can see from the race results, it's Nico Rosberg who wins the Australian Grand Prix from Daniel Ricciardo and Lewis Hamilton. Sebastian Vettel in 4th place there with, that, with Max Verstappen 5th with Steve Fox only missing help by less than a tenth of a second in 6th place. Brilliant result on his debut. The team's absolutely ecstatic for him. I'm happy for him. 
And uh, Kimi Raikkonen nice. So he finished in seventh, despite having wing damage. Apparently, he did have a bit of damage. Fernando Alonso finished in eighth for McLaren Honda, which was good. Fault. Uh, Felipe Massa ninth place. Carlos Sainz tenth. Jensen Button eleventh. Grosjean, our teammate, in twelfth. Then comes Perez. Bottas unfortunately dropped down the order. Hulkenberg, Ericsson, Palmer, Werlein, Naza, Arianto, Magnussen, and Danny Kliat, who, believe it or not, was the only retiree of the session. Uh, I believe he retired on. Uh, Lap 7 or 8, it might have been a bit later than that, but uh, as you can see, we end up finishing on the intermediates with the wet. Looking at incidents though, as you can see, Danny Kliat got in a collision with Sight, so his teammate got a warning for it. Daniel Ricciardo got a warning as well, with climbing with Rosberg. As you can see, it was lap 13 that Daniel, uh, Danny Kliat retired with mechanical failure, and then Bottas also got warnings for colliding with each other, so I think that was on lap 14 as well, but. As you can see though, the uh, driver's standings is no different to the race results, obviously the top 10 score points, ourselves though scoring 8 points on the debut race of a debut season. What more could you ask for? It's a dream come true for Steve, I'm absolutely sure of that. Obviously 11th onwards, so Button onwards, you know, Grosjean on our teammate, uh, both Force Indias and the rest of the field obviously don't score any points. You see Danny Cleart coming to 22nd for some reason. Um, and then constructors wise, right slightly in fourth place. Who would have thought it after round one, eh? Uh, Mercedes obviously at the top the top of the table, leading the way with Repel a close second, twelve points behind, then it's Ferrari third place, Haas ourself in fourth, McLaren Honda fifth, Williams sixth, Toro Rosso seventh, scoring only a little only point, then it's Force India, Salva, Manor and Renault all scoring no points whatsoever, and obviously they're all forty points behind as well. So, all in all, I can say that this race has been a fantastic one. It's provided plenty of action, especially from Steve himself. Um, and obviously, that Danny Clear having the mechanical fail mustn't have helped his chances, obviously, switching over from Red Bull to Toro Rosso. But, um, yeah, I apologise for the episode being quite a long one. I really do apologise. As you can see, uh, following the race, you actually get these resource points. Obviously, uh, it totals up all in the end. And uh, just moving on to the rivalry update, we're actually, it was 7 out of 30, but as you can see, we finished the race, we finished 6th place, which was where we needed to be, we know we finished ahead of the teammate, we didn't have a penalty, we got the fastest sectors and the fastest lap, meaning we've moved on up, and uh, they also have like a position thing where you finish, uh, I had 7th uh, already after the practice session, but as you can see, moving on at the end of it, we ended up getting the full bar, and getting to 10, meaning I presume we're on same thing as uh, same status as Roman Grosjean possibly but considering that was the first race we've completely dominated in his face and fit like Daniel Ricciardo matched Verstappen so not too bad but as you can see again on screen another new feature that's obviously in this game is the uh, career score and we ended up finishing with 7,296 points which wasn't bad uh, pretty decent score obviously the more points you get uh, due to uh, assist and so on but um, yeah that's been all for round one, uh, the Australian Grand Prix. Make sure you stick around to join us once again uh, for round two, which is the Bahrain Grand Prix with obviously Steve Fox and myself. And until next time, ta -ra.